Developers hate Rust. Despite Stack Overflow <laughs> claiming Rust is the most loved language year after year, I haven't seen this much genuine hate for a programming language in a long time. <laughs> it's gone so bad that I'm merely mentioning <laughs> Right off the bat, he's just triggered by the primogen. That's that's quite funny. And it's interesting to see that people are really hating and he's getting all of those comments about Rust. And I, I don't know, maybe we will see why during the video. But right now, I, I, I really can't see why people would hate Rust that much, especially because I don't know Rust that much. Rust can trigger developers. But this hate isn't all unfounded and it usually stems from five reasons. The first one being lack of job opportunities, to which I just have to say, <laughs> he got busted there. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that is definitely one one big reason why people would not like to embark on a journey to learn a new programming language or anything in life, to be honest. Because if there is a lack of job opportunities, it probably won't pay off to spend a lot of time learning, specializing and doing a lot of stuff, going through hoops just to get good at the programming language. And then in the end, so we don't get <laughs> any jobs. Unless, of course, uh, we are talking about just learning for fun or just doing stuff for fun, which I have done in the past as well with other programming languages. And well, it was fun, but I never got to work with those programming languages. So that's one thing to keep in mind. To hate Rust is the syntax. People say it's verbose, complex, and downright up. Complex and verbose. Um, let's see this example here. I can't tell if that's way too verbose or not, but my guess is that all of this ceremony here is because of, uh, Rust is also a statically compiled language that usually makes things more or a bit more complicated to write because you know, we now have to define types and each construct has its own type. Um, this is what I can see by this example here. Uh, but again, I'm not, I'm no specialist, so I do believe in him. He's the specialist here. Let's hear more. For comparison, let's take a look at the map method, which transforms a collection of one type to another type. The function signature in JavaScript is extremely simple, whereas in Rust, it gets pretty complicated. Uh, okay, this is a great example here. And uh, yeah, I think he, he, he chose really wisely the example here, uh, comparing, for example, a map from JavaScript to Rust. JavaScript, as you guys may know, is a dynamic language. There are no predefined types, or we don't have to write predefined types for the program to work. On the contrary here, I can see that Rust is a statically typed language, which means we have to do, or we have to write more code to specify the types we are working with. We see generics, trait, trait bounds, mm -hmm. closures, the size trait, and this signature doesn't even include lifetimes. So yes, the Rust syntax is more robust, more complex, and frankly, more intimidating than a lot of other languages. But there are some good reasons for this. Rust is a statically typed language, which favors explicitness in its type system. I think that example he gave was really awesome from JavaScript to Rust, but I would have liked even more if he could have given us an example from another statically typed language, such as Java or Golang, and just to show that difference. Because that's not only a something specific for Rust, but from statically typed languages, which is good. And it also has to model things like memory safety in its type system. The benefit of this is that it reduces ambiguity, which in turn reduces errors. The map function in JavaScript doesn't tell us what the type of the input parameter should be or what the function returns, if anything. Developers have to dig into documentation mm -hmm. to figure that out. This opens up the door for runtime errors because a developer can literally pass in anything to this function. <laughs> yes, I, I, I completely agree with him. Um, and that is one of the beefs I have with dynamic languages. They all suffer from from the same issues because there are no specified types, so they are all dynamic. We can simply pass anything at any point in time. And of course, we will only find out things go wrong in production or during runtime. The map method in Rust, on the other hand, tells us exactly what it expects as input and what it returns as output. 
the code documents itself and developers are required to follow this function's contract, otherwise they'll get a compile time error. By favoring explicit syntax and having a strong type system, Rust ensures your code is predictable, consistent, easier to refactor, debug, and maintain. It's also worth pointing out that Rust is constantly evolving, and improvements are being added to make the language more ergonomic. So if you've shied away from Rust because of the syntax or the type system, I completely understand. But I encourage you to give Rust a try and experience that warm fuzzy feeling you get when you successfully compile a program and know that it's basically going to work how you expect at runtime. He's really good at selling Rust, but it's not only about the syntax or the type systems and whatever. I think for me, especially uh, and personally, it's more about what the language was designed to for and what I want to work with. For example, Java, Golang, or even Python, for example, as a dynamic programming language, they, they are usually used to write backend stuff, APIs, network services, command line tools, and all of that cool stuff. And Rust, I do believe it's as it is to be a more low level language because of that people will probably use it for doing other kind of stuff such as writing embedded systems or even writing piece for an operating system such as windows or or linux and that for me could be the biggest indicator where I, I would like to learn that language or not the third reason developers hate rust is because they say there are better languages out there <laughs> First of all, we have C and C++, which are both low level and performant. If you're looking for simplicity, you can go with C. And if you're looking for a language that's object oriented, has modern features and a mature ecosystem, then you can go with C++. Not to mention that both C and C++ are established, widely used languages with plenty of job opportunities. On the other hand, you have Go, a language that's laser focused on simplicity, great for rapid development, and with an excellent concurrency model, it's especially great for building network services. These are great examples, but again, comparing C, C++, and Golang against Rust, they are, or they belong to separate categories. Golang is a more higher level language in comparison to C or C++, for, for example. Of course, you can do pretty much anything you want with C from operating systems to well databases and APIs but and that's the, and that's the biggest part which is to choose or pick the right tool for the right job it's easier and faster and more reliable to write an, an API or or a web service in Golang than writing it from scratch in C, for example. Such as web servers, APIs, and microservices. It's also great for CLI tools and automation scripts. And there are plenty open Go job positions. So, so far, I have not found a great reason here why people would hate Rust th that much. So far, I don't hate. I think, yes, it does have some weird syntax, but that would not stop me for, from learning the language at all. Excellent tool. The fourth reason developers hate Rust is because they either think there's too much drama or too much hype. Too much drama or too much hype. That is really interesting to hear. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but let, let's hear from him. I get YouTube comments all the time saying Rust is useless, it's overhyped, it's gonna die out soon, etc. And look, maybe you don't have a good use case for Rust. Or maybe somebody at work is forcing you to use Rust against your will. And despite seeing a clear benefit, you see all these people online preaching the gospel of Rust. As a member of the Rust Evangelism Strike Force, I get it, sometimes we could be a little much. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, but the numbers and success stories don't lie. Rust's momentum is continuing. A million new Rust developers joined the community over the last 12 months, plus plus subreddit. And Rust continues to be voted the most loved slash most admired language year after year. And we hype would be something that uh, concerns me, for example. I think there is there would be hype on everything that's new usually, such as ChatGPT, AI, or any new cool stuff that appears. People are usually really keen to dive in the, into the, te the technology and see what it, it can do, or simply, like, like he said, just spread the word. And I think that's, that's good, just to share the knowledge, share the awareness about that new technology. And I don't think that that's bad at all. We continue to see industry adoption by tech giants like Microsoft, AWS, and Google. So is the hype real? In my completely unbiased opinion, 
yeah, Rust might be a little overhyped, but the hype is certainly real. But don't take my word for it, look at the numbers, look at the success stories, and try it out yourself. On the other hand, some developers hate Rust because of the drama. It's no secret that the- Drama, that, that is also something really interesting. What's, what's the drama that has been happening in the Rust community? Has had its share of controversies. Entire teams leaving, the restrictive copyright policy draft, which sparked backlash, and other governance-related issues. Besides these specific issues, some developers see the foundation as too woke in general. At that would not concern me too much. I think any group or any committee, they, they have issues because we have a lot of people trying to agree on something and there is always someone which thinks about something that should be done or should not be done. And that's the way think things are. I don't know. I prefer myself to keep on the technical part and just leave all the <laughs> all the other stuff true to other people. I don't care about drama as long as people are doing their job. So that's fine. So this wouldn't be something that would concern me and wouldn't make me hate Rust. The fifth reason developers hate Rust is because it's too hard. And when... Yes, that can be a decisive factor for people not to pick a programming language or not to pick anything that <laughs> we have to deal with. And that's not only about a programming language, but that's, that's how we humans, we operate. So we try to avoid hard things at all costs. Yeah, I can I can see people really avoiding Rust because they think it is very complex or difficult to learn and having that steep curve. And yeah, that that part totally makes sense to me. When people say Rust is hard, they usually mean it in two ways. First of all, Rust is hard to learn. You need to know a bunch of prerequisite computer science knowledge. In addition, Rust is a low level language which forces you to think about how things are laid out in memory. That second part here is, I think that's the that's the key part. Rust is a low level language, and that and that's the whole the whole purpose of the language. And of course, it's gonna be way more complex than a high level programming language such as Python, for example. We probably have to dig in and to tweak things more. And that's the whole purpose of, of the language, to, just to work on that lower level and give it more performance to the applications. And Rust has a pretty complicated and unique type system. Things like the ownership and borrowing system, traits and generics, and macros, which take a considerable amount of time and effort to learn. The second way Rust is hard is that it's hard to read and write. Again, it has a pretty complicated type system and verbose syntax. You have to deal with multiple string types. Wow, we have to deal with so many string types. <laughs> Man, this chart is crazy. It's really crazy. I think one string type is is already good enough, but this much, that's, that's something else. Smart pointers, lifetime annotations. I mean, you can't even write a linked list without having a mental breakdown. In addition to the type system and syntax, there's also the borrow checker. Dealing with compile time errors all the time can be very frustrating and definitely slows down productivity. In fact, according to the 2023 Rust community survey, the biggest reason preventing people from learning Rust is its difficulty. But honestly, <laughs> Rust is not the problem. Don't blame a perfectly designed language on a skill issue. <laughs> a perfect designed language on a skill issue. <laughs> he really loves Rust. I, 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 I can see that. <laughs> if you wanted something easy, then learn a language that's made for five-year-olds like go now he hurts me really badly yeah I, i'll never forgive him for doing that <laughs> i know it's a joke he's joking i'm joking as well i can see this these reasons and why people would like to avoid the the programming language rust but i don't know i don't feel these are compelling reasons the core reasons i think people are right about avoiding rust because they don't want to deal with it is mostly because of the job market because rust doesn't have that market share yet so it's really hard to find a job and also uh, because it's a low level language so we have to deal and to worry about so many other things and people usually they people usually don't enjoy that much working on that lower level but for people who enjoy that's probably a great language and easier or way more powerful than doing things in c or c++ so what do you think